He says, there's something in the works. Would you be interested? He says, you can do what you want. You can go to Minneapolis if you want. But I think I'm going to be able to work out something where we're going to go to work for Vince McMahon. But it's up to you, you know? I says, yeah, I'm sure, of course, you know? So this sets up 1984 going to New York WWF. My dad's, what the whole thing behind this was, they had cleared up. My dad had worked out a deal, I guess, with them. My dad was going to take them to court and win hugely in court over marketing. Kind of like probably what Jesse Ventura ended up mm -hmm. doing with, with, with them. Okay. Okay? I'm assuming. I pro I'm probably off a little bit, but I'm assuming it's something like that. So he, so, so, so he brings, so, so they work something out where, okay, Bruno, look, we'll give you X amount of dollars. You come in, be our commentator. And at the same time, I guess I was the bonus. We'll bring David in, let David work here, I guess. But I thought it would be much more. I wanted to go to New York and be a star. Well, my dad's pumping me up about it. He says, okay, this is a great opportunity. Blah, blah. Hulk Hogan had just taken the title. Hulk Hogan is the big deal. You know, of all the stars there at that time, was Snooka, was... Uh, 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 <coughs> Iron Sheet, Tito Santana. Yeah, okay, yeah. But I'm, I'm in here before some of these guys come in here, and this is where I see the crap come in. So... My, my dad's telling me beforehand, this is going to be a great opportunity. You're going to be a, a, a you just, a, a. all right, let me, get, let me, let me, let me, let me go into this. We have to meet with Vince McMahon. Okay, their office at the time was in uh, uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. This is G Junior? Junior. This is the morning, in the morning, that night we were going to do the first TV, they used to do their TV in Poughkeepsie, New York. But we get there early to talk over, do whatever, in Greenwich, Connecticut. Now, we get to Greenwich, Connecticut, and to the wrestling office there. My dad tells me, when they were, were uh, I meet Vince McMahon Jr. and blah, blah. David, you wait here. So he like shoves me aside. I sit in the lobby, look at a magazine. So my dad's in there with him, I'd say, for an hour. But I didn't think nothing of that, you know. Hey, my dad's taking care of business. He wants me to be, you know, fine. I know what I want. I know what I want. And it wasn't even dollar signs. I want to be a star. I know, because if you're a star, the dollar signs follow. <clears throat> So they put me on TV every now and then. They put me over on TV. They put they put me over everywhere. They never do anything with me. You know, just put me in preliminary matches. I'm pressing guys over my head on TV. I was at my biggest weight. I was 255 pounds. Son of the living legend. Just not doing nothing with me. Just doing absolutely nothing with. Me. Just working preliminary matches all the time. And Tonga Kid, I don't know if you remember these guys. Mm -hmm. Tonga Kid, right away, pushed into a big star, pushed into an angle, a big angle on TV, gonna be the new snooker. Boom, 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 boom. Ricky Steamboat, come in with this big buildup. Boom, 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 everything. The Dragon, they, they do more things with him. Here's David, coming out in his black tights, doing his second match. Okay, yay! You know, nothing, nothing. Wyndham, Rotundo, America's, you know, America's team. Blum, blum, US blum. Express. US Express, all the music. This is, you know, now everybody comes out to music and this and that, big, big, you know, deal. But then here comes David in the black tights. Okay, gets another victory. Wow, ooh, beat, beat another nobody. <clears throat> This is where grooming comes in. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna be, you have to groom somebody to be something. 
Alan complained to my dad about all this. Oh, be a good boy, save your money. David, later on down the road, they're going to do things with you. When, when rest, See, my dad thought, or he was, here's, okay, here now we're getting into some things here. Now that I'm older, I was immature then, but now that I'm older, I can think, I can think a little bit. My dad is conning me, bullshitting me all the time, but for my own good, he thinks. You see, he knew that they're never going to do anything with me. He's like telling me, David, just be a good boy, save your money, because later on when wrestling dies, they're going to use you and go back to the old school and go back to what wrestling is. Because he's telling me with all these gimmicks, with the Hulk and Manny and this guy and that guy and the guy with the dragon and the guy with the snake and the guy with the, uh, the clown makeup and this guy, it's all going to die and wrestling is going to go boom. And they're going to have to go back out there and, and be boring again. So I'll, so I'll fit in, right? But he's telling this to me. He's, tell, he's BSing me, thinking that I'll behave myself and that I'll just, you know, do be a good boy, make all your shows. He knew that there was nothing ever going to be done with.